What's going on guys? So today we're looking at a knife trade that I was pretty excited about. Um, I had traded my one CRKT knife for these two CRK knives. All right. So of course the question is which one? Obviously there's only one that can possibly be the knife I traded and that would be the CRKT Shock or XOC um, because that is a $750 knife and is extremely limited. I think there was only 100 made. But a really interesting blade, I hate to give it up, but I got this offer and I had to bite on it because I want to try out these new models from Chris Reeves. So, or Chris Reeve. There's a difference between Chris Reeves and Chris Reeve. One's Superman, one's just super awesome. <laughs> so anyway, um, yes, we have a folder and we have a fixed blade. So let's go ahead and take these out and take a look at it. Now this is my first Chris Reeve uh, fixed blade. So let's actually start there. So this one is, let me get this to, to focus. There we go. Uh, Nyla. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, Insingo. This is black KG gun coat. Uh, black canvas micarta scales. And S35VN. All right. So there's the box. Open this up. There's the knife and it's amazing little sheath. Let's go ahead and see the, the paperwork. Let's get all kinds of paperwork with Chris Reeves knives. Chris Reeve, jeez. I always say that, I say Chris Reeves. So registration paper. We have uh, the actual little card with everything, uh, you know, the specs basically on it, which version of it is. This one was born November 19th, 2020. So the 2020 knife, which always is interesting. Um, but yeah, little uh, guarantee on the back there. You can pause your screen and read that if you never saw one of these. Then we have a cool decal, which is awesome. Which doesn't want to stay in the box. And then we have a little message here from the team. Okay. It says, well, it's about the specific knife here. So this is the Nyla. Take it to the bush. Take it to the bush, a modern take on a classic Skinner. Each knife that leaves our workshop is inspected and carefully packaged to ensure that it reaches you, our customer, in prime condition. We do not recommend that you store your knife in the sheath for extended periods. After use, uh, wipe the knife clean with a soft cloth. Uh, if it has been used in a corrosive medium, like blood, salt, water, etc., be sure to wash it in fresh water. Coat the blade with a thin film of lubricant like WD-40 um, or a good quality gun oil 3-in-1 or the like to maintain the knife and prevent corrosion. Um, the old WD-40 lubricant thing, that's debatable. Anyway, um, handle is made of canvas micarta that has been polished for aesthetic purposes. When used around moisture, the canvas fibers will bloom, improving the grip. Uh, this can change the appearance of the micarta, however. The handles can be refinished for a small fee. And then about, there's some contact information. And they're down in Boise, Idaho. So, let's put that off to the side here. Now, this does come with a, uh, a nice lanyard on here, which I'm taking off. I just think it's, it's unnecessary for my purposes. Of course, it's a functional lanyard you can use, but I'm going to take this one off. I'm obviously going to keep it in the box there, like keeping the all original stuff for these knives. So here's the sheath, really beautiful leather work. I mean, it's, it's just it's perfect for what it is. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. Nice uh, belt loop on there. All right, just really well done. Ah, smells like leather. Love that smell. All right, so here's a knife. You can see it is, uh, a good fit in the sheath. Let me put it back just for one second here. Right. See, it's kind of press fit, all right? It holds about half the handle. So I mean, there's no possible way this is accidentally coming out. <clears throat> you have to want it out to get it out. It's not hard, it's not hard to pull out, but it's definitely uh, not gonna fall out. So here is the knife. There's a couple different blade shapes. This one obviously um, is the Warncliffe style blade here. Um, uh, well, I would still say Warncliffe, but some might see it as a sheep's foot blade. I mean, you know, personal preference, I think it's a Warncliffe. It comes to a little bit more of a point. A sheep's foot would kind of drop off here, but that's just my opinion. Who knows what they're calling it. But you can see Idaho made. I really like the scales on here. They're rounded, 3D cut. Really interesting. Let me get that to focus for you. There we go. You can see how they're rounded there. We got some scallops in the uh, the handle there, or the uh, the actual tang. 
right, that correspond with those cutouts. It's a really interesting feel. It feels like no other, no other handle. It's just it's fascinating to me. Nice lanyard hole on the bottom. Of course, their logo stamped. But yeah, really, I mean, I like the way this feels. I don't know, hard cutting, if those grooves are going to be irritating to the hand or not. Aesthetically, it's very pleasing. It's a very good looking knife. This one is in black. They do make this, I believe, like in a satin finish. But yeah, really cool. I had, this is my first fixed blade from uh, Chris Reeve. So I'm interested to uh, see how that performs. But it's looking nice. I know that. And then the folder here is, drum roll please, we have a large Inkosi. Um, so this is a knife that I was kind of interested in for a while. I mean, I'm interested in pretty much any nice knife out there. I want to see what it's like, right? But this is uh, definitely different, different than like the Sabenza, you know, which obviously uh, most um, informed about, let's say, from, uh, from Chris Reeve knives. But he's had so many different cool knives. I really want, I don't know the name offhand, but I want his slip joint that he has. Um, I never had one of his uh, Mandy knives either. That's another just super common, popular knife model from them. But let's see, the folder comes with all kinds of stuff. I have a little booklet here. This is nice. This shows a breakdown of all the parts for the knife, all right, which is really cool. All right, also, the card showing the specs on the specific one. This one was born September 24th, 2020. So another 2020 knife. All right. Again, a little registration card and a decal. So that's cool. Then off the side, we have our little wrench. All right, we have the lanyard if you want to throw it on there. We have another pocket clip, which is really cool. There's a, a deep concealed pocket clip, I believe, on this one. All right. Actually, I put this wrench back in there. It probably fell out. There's three wrenches. Three wrenches. Um, looks like... Chris Reeve branded grease, uh, as well as, what is this, this is like, oh it is Loctite, alright, so they give you grease and Loctite for your knife, very cool, these are just nice little touches, you know, obviously a lot of knife companies don't do stuff like that, but they, well, they sell a very high end expensive knife, so, I don't know, I always appreciate bonuses like that, some people think it's just, you know, totally necessary, it's not. They could just ship the knife in a, in a plastic bag and be done with it, but I think it's nice they do go the extra mile and give you stuff like that. So obviously we have our Chris Reeve little, uh, you know, wipe down rag here, which is nice too, obviously, if you're going to be doing things to it, it doesn't get scratched up. But yeah, here's the blade. It's, first off, the, the pocket clip um, is really fascinating. I don't know if I'm going to put this clip on. We have the deep conceal. It's really, really cool that they're offering that or just traditional um, you know, smaller, this is a very thin in comparison, well, it's thinner, I wouldn't say very thin, let me show you the difference here. But, um, yeah, simple, regular, traditional style clip, compared to this deep conceal clip, which is a nice option a lot of people do like. So I'm not sure if I'll leave that on or not, I'll certainly try it with that. But yeah, really cool, totally different look, we have the double finger, uh, choils here, it's kind of an aggressive look. Alright, double studs. I'm not a huge fan overall, it's not their design. I'm just saying, in general, of a step-down thumb stud. What I mean by that is a pyramid-shaped stud. They come to a point. So, although it's totally functional, I can use them, um, you know, it's just, I feel like, I don't know, it's not the worst thing in the world. This is actually a better example of one. I can point out a specific knife. It is the Kershaw Vapor. I want to say it's the Vapor. And that thing like just cut into my thumb. It was so pointed. This is at least the, the point on it's rounded. But anyway, I just, you know, it's not the most comfortable thumb studs in the world, but it works fine. That lockup is pretty insane though. You feel, you feel that kind of doof. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously that's not going anywhere. So, and we got to wipe our little blade down. You know how it is. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a cool looking knife. This one also obviously in... A, a Warncliffe style blade. Um, again, something totally different. Just wanted to think outside the box here. Generally speaking, I'd get a, you know, a, a drop point or something similar. Um, but it's it's a really aggressive looking knife. I do like the full size here. All right, it feels nice in the hand initially. I do feel the deep concealed pocket clip, but it doesn't doesn't seem like it'd be an issue. I really feel that jimping, very purposeful jimping. All right, and obviously our um, S35BM blade is going to perform very nicely. 
I already know that. Um, but I will actually use this knife and see if there's any kind of hot spots. I'm, I am going to leave this clip on. I am curious. I mean, long term, I might switch, uh, switch to that one. I don't really have to have deep concealed, but I'm curious about it on this setup um, as far as like the comfort and stuff. Because like I said, I could feel it there. I don't know if that's going to create any kind of hot spots or not. But it, right now, it feels comfortable just squeezing kind of hard here. But I don't know if that's going to be an issue really, really, you know, cutting. But yeah, there you go. Just another, you know, upper crust knife. <laughs> I know a lot of people like, uh, you know, seeing the expensive stuff. And once in a blue moon, if I can trade for something that's more expensive just to try it out, I love to do that because there's all different types of uh, knife collectors and knife users that buy all different types of knives. I do a video on this and then someone's like, oh, boo, boring, show me a $15 knife, that's what I buy. And then I show the $15 knife and then the other dudes are like, mm, boring, show me the $450 knife, you know? So it's just all different types of knives for all different types of people. Um, this is not like, you know, they're blow your socks off type stuff. It's not magic. I've said that before. It's a very, very nicely made, precise um, piece of cutlery. You know, it's a high-end knife. Uh, it's super smooth. It locks up super tight. So far, it feels comfortable. We know it's super sharp. But, you know, outside of that, it just, people have a different appreciation for different types of knives. Some people would say this is a total waste of money. You can get a good knife for 50 bucks. And other people will say, well, you know, this is baseline stuff. You know, I, I got to have Damascus or Damascus or, you know, I got to have uh, mammoth uh, ivory tooth inserts, you know, otherwise it's not cool. So different strokes for different folks. But I think it is going to be a good performing knife, but we're going we're gonna to go ahead and use this one. I, I got both of these in trade with the intention on using them and maybe eventually doing uh, full reviews on them uh, down the road. But yeah, just really cool. Love it. So that is it for now. Go ahead and put this here for the, the exit of the video. You guys see both of them together, right? There it is. So the, the latest trade, some uh, Chris Reeve knives. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know down in the comment section if you rock a Chris Reeve knife in your EDC, what knife you have, what you think of it. Overall, obviously, they make very high-end cutlery. Um, I can never get the names of things. I, I want to say that he's from uh, South Africa. Um, and a lot of these names for stuff are different tribal things, but you know, I, I can't pronounce anything correctly. So uh, if I mispronounce something, uh, then, you know, it is what it is. So that's all. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching again. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.